Honestly, I don't really know if I'm ready to review this movie, but I I will. Um, I there's only just so long I can sit and ponder about this movie. Anyway, uh, I'm John Stark from MagMovieGuy.com, and if you could smash both the like and subscribe buttons, we'll get along just fine. I my love is conditional, and. Uh, that's that's how you earn my love. This is hypnotic. It's on Peacock, and it has audio description, and it is directed by Robert Rodriguez, which used to be a thing that when we said it was really cool, and now when we say it, we're like, well, at least he's still alive. You know, I don't think Robert Rodriguez's name holds nearly the weight that it did 20 years ago. When you used to say directed by Robert Rodriguez 20 years ago, people were like, oh my God, I have to see this movie. You say it now and it's just like, the dude is remaking his own movie. He's making the new Spy Kids movie that's on Netflix is directed by Robert Rodriguez. He's remaking his own movie. I just... I really don't know what's happening with him. I got nothing. Um, this feels like he watched Inception 10 years ago and spent 10 years trying to figure out a way how to make an Inception movie. <laughs> like, he was like, Damn you, Christopher Nolan! I'm gonna make this movie. I'm gonna do this. And you're gonna be sorry. Because my movie's gonna be better than yours. So we came up with Hypnotic. Hypnotic is a film where there's there's a school of thought about just exposition uh, and how to handle that. In some ways, I've seen exposition as a data dump at the beginning of the film. And some ways, it, that's not great. It depends on how much data dump you need at the beginning of the film. But then when you have a character who feels like their entire existence in the film is to just vomit exposition, I kind of wish I had seen the version with the data dump at the beginning, which would have allowed for a film instead of having to constantly explain itself and explain what this confusing situation is uh, all the time if we just were able to establish that this is the world in which we live, then maybe that would have been a better approach. I don't know. It's, it's tough. I flip a coin. It's definitely creative and inventive. I will say that. Um, but it also feels like it's trying so hard to be something like something else. If that makes any sense. It feels so close to so many other things. Um, almost like when we had The Matrix, and then we were following The Matrix with films that were like The Matrix, like Existence and Equilibrium. Um, it, it was really hard to get excited about those films. Now, we can go back and look at them. If you look at them separately, they're really not bad. There's stuff to like in both of those films. But eh, they're not The Matrix, you know, this film feels like it should have been released like three or four years after Inception. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it feels like it should have been like a response to Inception from Robert Rodriguez. Instead, it came way too late. Um, basically, what this is, is Ben Affleck stars as a cop whose daughter is missing and we meet him when he's sort of waking up in a session with his psychiatrist, his therapist. And he's just sort of had a little bit of a vision of his daughter. And this film is very much uh, a, a progressive magic trick. So this film shows you exactly what it wants to show you when it wants to show you it and you have to believe what it shows you at the time so everything that happens it just kind of like get ready to have your mind blown and have your world turned upside down 
multiple times in this film. So uh, you think this dude's just like a cop and he's passed his psychiatric evaluation to be um, to be able to return to duty. He's got his partner outside, J.D. Pardo, um, uh, who, I don't know, wasn't he on like a medical drama or cop drama or something on TV? Anyway, he's back as a cop, uh, <laughs> partner to Ben Affleck. And they ride off, and as soon as they ride off, and ben, Ben's like, I, I was cleared, uh, they get this call, and there's a call that uh, a bank is going to be robbed, and uh, it was, you know, it's just this voice, uh, and, you know, so they go to investigate it. Lo and behold, yeah, the bank is about to be robbed. So they go in, and then shit just, like, goes in a completely different direction. And from this point on, you're introduced to a character, uh, Diane, Diana, Diane, anyway, um, played by Alicia Braga, who becomes our guide. She becomes our Jiminy Cricket (laughs) for the rest of the film. Um... And is here as a walking exposition device. (laughs) As a human exposition to explain things. She does so much explaining to Ben Affleck, meaning to the audience, that it's... I almost... (laughs) I'm like, Robert, did your film... Is your film that confusing that you needed a character... To just hang out with Ben Affleck to explain everything to him? I mean, she explains who the... Like, because he's suddenly dropped into this world he didn't know existed. So he doesn't even know the players. He didn't know that there were things called... People called hypnotics. Who were able to alter people's minds and get them to do things. People were powerful. He know He's... You know, he, he talks about, like, telepaths and telekinesis and stuff like that. So... He watched the X-Men, so he understands what that is. <laughs> but um, this new hypnotic thing is, like, really interesting to him. Uh, and he watches, like, things that he never thought he would ever see happen. Like, two cops turn and shoot themselves. Um, and just, like, people just seem to be able to make other people do things. And uh, this woman is seems to know a lot about it. And he just kind of takes her at her word that she's there as, uh, to stop it. She's, like, a good guy. And, you know, he he and his partner rush her into protective custody. Um, there are scenes that are, like, given to us for very specific purposes that don't make any sense to, like, the overall plot when you get back around to it at the end of the film. Uh, it's like Robert Rodriguez just threw in cool shit. He was like, this scene's gonna be cool. Let's do this scene. But it doesn't make any sense. Like, they go, and he takes her back, and he's got her in what he calls protective custody, which is just, like, a random room somewhere. Apparently, he can't trust his own cops, so he just takes her somewhere. Um, and, uh... When you get to the end of the film, I don't want to spoil this film entirely, but I'll say, like, as an example of a scene that doesn't work when you when you actually reach the end of the film, um, he's talking with Diane and getting a data dump of exposition about the world of hypnotics and the government program and these people and the bad guys and what they're trying to do. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it's just all this, just, I mean, God, Alicia Braga's, her sole purpose in life is to just exposition, to just continuously spout exposition all over the place. Anyway, his partner goes outside for like a smoke break, and there's like a hypnotic out there that, that hypnotizes him into changing his personality and then coming back in and doing... You know, and going after and trying to kill Ben Affleck and Alicia Braga. Uh, Rourke is his is his character's name, and, and Diane. So Rourke and Diane. Um, 
That scene doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> when you get around to it later on in the end, I don't want to spoil it, but it, you'll find out why it doesn't make any sense because I'll say it's a scene that we were shown. It's not a scene that Ben Affleck was shown. The scene would only work if Ben Affleck was shown it. Um, we're shown this, like, you know, how hypnotic works, but it's totally unnecessary. Yeah. Um, that's about all I can really say. Uh, because everything is about Ben Affleck's perception of this world. And since Ben Affleck wasn't there for that moment, he didn't, like, go take a smoke break with his partner. Um, I don't know why we were shown that scene. I, I still don't know. Like, I'm sitting here just thinking, like, I don't... I used to think Robert Rodriguez was a good director, but there are so many scenes in here. I mean, he wrote and directed this. He put that into the, into the screenplay. So, like, why? Why? Why is that there? I don't know. Um, he, Robert is, has always been known for being heavily involved in all of his processes. He edits his own films. Um, a, a member of the Rodriguez clan did the score. You know, it's just, it's, it's a family affair. It, it's his studio. He's very self-contained. Um, and he has full control. So, I mean, like, when his films live or die, it's all on his shoulders. He really has nobody else to blame but himself. Um, ben Affleck is fine here. There's nothing really to, to take... I can't really besmirch his performance. Uh, he's given a, a really bizarre script um, to have to deal with that does surprise i mean i i gotta say robert rodriguez made things happen in this film where i didn't know we were gonna go there and then we went there and i was like okay this is where this is what this is wow i didn't see that coming so yeah i mean there but surprising me for the surprise sake if the payoff wasn't earned doesn't necessarily make make it a good surprise you know, if you don't earn the payoff. And I feel like I spent too much time with Diane wandering around <laughs> explaining everything. And I just kept thinking, There's, I had so many thoughts by the end of the film. I was like, why? Like, I, the whole film, I was like, why? Why? What, what purpose? What purpose does this serve? Um... And I, I think he ends up just kind of killing his own film. Uh, if you don't think about it too much, there'll be people who think that this is like the best thing since sliced bread. You know what I'm saying? Like just like, oh my God, sh uh, just blown away. Because it does kind of get that really sort of confusing, um, you know, deep dive into this hypnotic world and it feels a little bit like Inception and there's some like if I start comparing it to anything other than Inception it's going to reveal what I'm talking about um but th there's some other films that I could easily compare it to but I'll go with Inception uh because of the planting ideas which is what the hypnotics do they plant ideas inside your head so that's the closest thing I can think of without revealing the rest of the film um that's the best I got I really don't want to ruin this for anybody I thought it because I think some people might find this to be decent I sort of enjoyed it but at the same time it's something where I can sit down and be like my god I feel like this whole film doesn't make any sense and is totally pointless but as presented if I flip that switch <laughs> If I was a little less smarter than I am, I would probably sit back and be like, wow. Oh my God. This film was awesome. Some people will love the ever-loving crap out of this film. <laughs> Some people are going to think this is the best film of the year. I feel that. <laughs> I feel like people are just going to be like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. And it's like, true, but when you explore the why behind it, 
that's where Robert Rodriguez doesn't want you to ask any questions about this film. Uh, that's why he's he's trying to throw you off by having a character who is constantly explaining things to you, so that way you feel smart and you feel like you're really up to date. Unfortunately, by doing so, he reveals a lot of holes in his own plot, in his own storyline. And uh, the only way I could ever explain that would be to actually just reveal the entire movie, which is not something I like to do inside of a review. So, um, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the audio description. Very weird experience for me. Um, it's on Peacock, by the way. And the last time I heard this voice was on Paramount+. Plus. This is the guy that narrates Tulsa King, which uh, I would say I gave the award of worst audio description of 2022 to. Um, it sounded like he was recording the audio description off of a computer mic from the 90s in his home, like in his home, basically. Um, it was such poor quality he was so unintelligible. The echo was bad. Everything about it, it was like unprocessed. Um, and I'd never heard the voice before. And I was like, what is this? This is really the best we can do for this show. It's just awful audio, awful quality audio description. Um, this is very clean. The guy speaks just fine, obviously when he sent his audio description off to, because it's a completely different company that made this film. Obviously, they took better care with the audio track, and they didn't just, like... I don't know what happened with this Tulsa King description, but good God. Um, so, yeah, this guy's actually a great narrator. I loved his voice. He really makes this film feel more intense. He's got one of those really intense voices... Uh, almost like the heir apparent to maybe like William Michael Redmond. Um, if you, if he, if he can continue to find somebody who will uh, properly make sure his tracks land, you know, and he doesn't sound like horrific ass garbage. Um, I think he's a great narrator and I thought his voice was perfect for the film. Uh, and that as far as the written audio description, the film does a really good job of giving you what you need in the moment. <laughs> so it's really hard to describe to you because it constantly changes. <laughs> it constantly is like, this is a surprise! <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just... So it really can't. But it does reveal to you those moments as they're being revealed. Um... And uh, sort of how they play out. And I thought he did a really good job with the description by not telegraphing that there was something more. You know, by not being like, well, this is what this is now, but <laughs> I've seen this movie. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> we'll wait about two scenes, and uh, what I just said isn't going to make any damn sense anymore. Um, yeah, this film is constantly changing and evolving, and it has a walking exposition character, which is never really a good sign. Although, she does, she is there for a reason. They do give Diane a backstory, so it's not like she has no purpose. Um, she's actually really integral to the plot of the story. It's just everything she says is exposition. She just <laughs> walks around, and she's like, back in the day, starting in 1960, she feels like you're taking a tour of a museum, and she's your guide, you know? <laughs> Like, she's like, let me explain to you aviation, <laughs> you know, like, from the very beginning. Welcome to the Aviation Museum. I shall talk to you about aviation from its conception all the way up until the present. Um, and then she just goes for, like, the whole film. That's kind of what her performance is. It's a very weird performance. I don't even know how to grade it because Rodriguez doesn't give her much to do other than just explain things. Uh good job at explaining uh, because by the time she gets around to having to actually be in a character that emotes it doesn't work it, it, it doesn't because we know next to nothing about her so um, when he finally decides oh I should use her as a character now I, I don't know anything about her She's been, she spent so long talking about everybody else I don't know anything about her so 
I don't care. I, I just, Ben Affleck, this is fine. You know, I thought he did a good job. He's playing a cop and Affleck's gotten a lot better as an actor. Um, and uh, I feel like he should be more surprised by everything. Like, like he should just constantly have his mind blown. Uh, just be, because there's a lot of things in this film that are just like, but he does, there are some references to maybe like his jaw dropping, kind of just like him staring and being like, what? Just like, <laughs> just, um, yeah, it's, I can't even imagine, like, if I was Ben Affleck's character and this movie was happening to me, I would probably give up and just go cry in the corner at some point. Just be like, I give up. Would you stop? Please. Not because it's scary, just because you just like, my world keeps collapsing around me. World, life as I know it has dramatically changed. <laughs> it's just very weird. Um, this film just bombed at the box office. I think I, I can't even put di from directed by Robert Rodriguez anymore and get people in seats. So Ben Affleck, Robert Rodriguez, nobody watched this movie. It's now on Peacock. Um, I was, uh, I was more interested and involved in this film because I was trying to pay attention to it because of the complexities of what Rodriguez has set up here. So I will give it that in the fact that in the moment it's entertained me, but it's like eating food that gives you acid reflux. By the time you have actually consumed everything, you go back around to it and you just go, wait a minute, what? You know... Um, and that's not good. Uh, by the time I reached the end of the film, after I consumed what, what he was feeding me, I just... And also, by the way, I should say, um, don't immediately flip off. I know, like, when we see credits, our initial reaction, unless it's a Marvel movie, is to piece the, piece the hell out. <sighs> There's a mid credit sequence. I don't know why, but there is. I guess he thought he was going to get hypnotic too. Hypnotic reloaded? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but there is one, so if you want the full context of the film, stay for that. I should also, uh, before I grade, just give a quick nod to some of the, the notable supporting cast, like William Fickner and... Uh, Jackie Earl Haley, but um, yeah, I'll go slightly positive on this just because it engaged me in the time in which, and it doesn't overstay its welcome because it, it does feel like it's paced well enough. So I'm going to go with a C plus for Hypnotic. Um, it probably deserves lower, but if I think about like when I was in the film it did keep me engaged because the film is so damn confusing uh, that you feel like you have to pay attention to it, otherwise you're going to miss something. This is a film you don't want to take a bathroom break. This is a film you pee in the theater, in the cup, because you're like, I don't... What is happening in this film? <laughs> you know, this is the film. <laughs> Nobody leaves the theater because it's constantly changing into something else, or Diane is telling you something, and you're just like, what? You know... <laughs> I don't know. He wrote the... Robert Rodriguez's return to cinema was, like, the most confusing thing he could have possibly done, but I feel like he spent ten years trying to figure out how to make Inception, so this is it. This is his Inception. It's just not... It's not Inception. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I will... Uh, I do have a website, MacMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads at MacMovieGuy. You can go to the Audio Description Project, adp.acb.org, and let you know what does have audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the adna.org, and you can, .org, and you can see um, who's narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it for me today. I will review something else for you guys, and see you on the other side.